हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू एवरीथिंग मेथोलॉजी एंड वेलकम टू द पार्ट टू ऑफ गेट एम 2021 मेमोरी बेस्ड क्वेश्चंस सो बेसिकली इन दिस सीरीज ऑफ वीडियोस व्हाट वी आर डूइंग इज वी आर जस्ट ऑलरेडी कलेक्टेड क्वेश्चंस एंड वी आर गिविंग यू आउट द बेसिक आइडिया ऑफ हाउ टू गो अबाउट द क्वेश्चंस राइट सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद दिस पार्ट सो द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन ओके अगेन हियर एन इजी क्वेश्चन बेस्ड ऑन ऑक्सीडेशन लॉस ओके so this is like a chocolate question <laughs> they directly gave in the note that they say that the weight gain is actually proportional to root t this same formula or this proportionality is given in the question itself okay so uh, what was the question so the question was when you are actually uh, you know corroding or oxidizing something in some atmosphere in 400 seconds you got to mg per centimeter square this was the weight lost or the weight gain okay usually oxidation so weight gain and they said if you are performing the same thing for 1600 seconds what would be the weight gain so which is very much obvious from this given condition itself so what will be so x1 by x2 is equal to what root over t1 by t2 that's it So initially x1 is 2 and x2 is what we need to calculate equal to root over t1 is 400 seconds divided by t2 is 1600 seconds. So this goes four times. So from here you get x2 equal to 2 into root 4 is again 2. So this is 4. So straightforward question, right? So this is an oxidation law based question. Hello. ఎవరండి చెప్పండి లేదండి మాకు అది అంటే సిగ్నల్ అవి సరిగ్గా ఉండట్లేదు అండ్ మెయిన్ పవర్ బ్యాకప్ లేదు సో అందుకే తీసేసాం ఆల్రెడీ వేరేవి కూడా పెట్టించేసాం సో ఇప్పుడు ఏమొద్దండి లేదండి లేదండి ఆల్రెడీ సిక్స్ మంత్స్ బ్యాకే మా అనిపించేసాం ఓకే అండి the second question in this part is uh, an interesting question uh, again it's an easy question uh, just a simple tricky so they asked a ratio of sigma zz by sigma xx so this ratio is what they asked okay and what is the given value they said that it is a plane strain condition okay plane strain condition means sigma zz equal to 0 even this is mentioned in the question sigma sorry epsilon zz is equal to 0 right so here they gave nu to be 0.3 and they want this ratio okay so nothing is uh, nothing uh, else is given to us so people will be confused how can i go and find out the ratio and yeah uh, yeah one more thing which they gave is this thing that the normal stresses in x and y direction are equal sigma x is equal to sigma y by so how to go about it so you have to think about the overall strain formula what is it the overall strain in a particular direction here let's take z so epsilon z z will be equal to okay so here basically this guy is equal to 0 in this case right so the formula that we have can be equated to zero that is what the logic is but what is the formula so basically if you are dealing with some overall strain in one direction one normal direction you must be keeping in mind that okay fine you have one normal stress acting in that direction okay which is called longitudinal strain developed or along with it along with this particular longitudinal strain because of the other two directions which are x and y you also have some transfer strain generated correct so you are getting the reason why this poisson's ratio is given to us so new here is the poisson's ratio and the poisson's ratio is what new is minus epsilon zz by epsilon xx okay similarly the other one uh, this can be written as nu is equal to minus epsilon yy 
by epsilon xs. So here what I considered is xx is the longitudinal strain. That means the load, let's say you are using a uniaxial tensile test, your loading is in the x direction. Okay, so your transfer strains will be in z and y directions. Okay. Similarly, if you are assuming that, okay, fine, if the if you are overall strain calculated, okay, you want in z direction, then you have one longitudinal definitely. Okay, so longitudinal strain coming in from sigma z z plus you have two transfer strain terms, right? What are those two? Two transfer strains because of sigma xx and sigma yy. This is the logic behind this question. So now it's pretty much easy. You have all the formula here. So this is zero here. And longitudinal strain is what? Hooke's law again. Sigma zz by e minus nu into sigma xx by e which is x minus nu into sigma yy by e. Okay, so just applying Hooke's law, we can write this, right? Strain is equal to stress by Young's modulus. Whereas here in these two terms, why this minus nu came in? Because of the transfer strain terms. As simple as that. Okay, so now if you can see, we also have this guy over here. That sigma x is equal to sigma y y. So these two are equal. And E gets cancelled. So, what is that you are left with? You are left with sigma zz minus 2 nu into sigma xx is equal to 0. That's it. You got the answer. You got sigma zz by sigma xx is equal to how much? You will be left with 2 nu. So, nu is given as 0 0.3. Therefore, your answer is 0 0.6. Very good question. Okay, so you need to dig down to the basics, go to the overall strain formula and not only formula but how the overall strain is actually generated in a body especially here in plane strain condition because this zero is important. So beautiful question this time. Okay, so your answer would be 0 0.6, right? The next question, the next question uh, you know, we got three important matchings which I want to explain. Okay, the third question matching from NDT. Okay, very easy matching. If you are following our channel or if you are just go through some of the previous year questions, you can easily be able to do this, right? So, what was that? So, in the first option, they asked die penetrant. So, die penetrant, what happens? Okay, it is due to capillary action. Okay, so next thing is, uh, I think they asked X-ray, right, uh, radiography. Okay, radiography is based on the absorption X-ray, absorption, correct, and also based on the density of the body. And also the next thing I think they asked about the ultrasonic. Okay, again, um, I don't exactly remember what techniques they asked, but yeah, we know, right? Uh, the principle behind it. So ultrasonic uh, based on elastic waves okay, or the sound waves. And the last one, I think they asked about eddy current. Okay, I think it's eddy current or magnetic. I don't remember exactly, but uh, it is actually based on electromagnetic induction okay only when the eddy currents are actually induced in the body you can detect whether you know the flaws are there or not so this is an easy matching from ndt right the next matching is from metal forming okay matching from metal forming again i am not drawing here but this is a easy easy matching what they did is in group one or column one they just gave the figures of you know or the schematics of the different uh, metal forming processes and you need to just match them up so what are all we got we got deep drawing okay where we have a block punching the sheet we have uh, extrusion okay we all know what is extrusion right so basically using RAM, we use to push it so that uh, you get some bullets generated from it. 
and the next thing is open die forming okay what is open die forming open die forming is where you know just hitting with some hammer or some pressure and i think the final one is rolling okay so this is a pretty straightforward matching if you just at least go through the you know basic functionalities of different metal forming process you can easily identify these uh, schematic diagrams right they directly give the schematic diagrams right beautiful two marks you got with this and also one more matching they gave which is also uh, a simple matching from extractor this time okay matching from what from extract extract to metallurgy so here they asked about scn submerged entry nozzle which is present in your continuous casting and uh, they asked about lancing okay what do we have lancing is in bof correct uh, the oxygen and i think they asked uh, something about blast furnace okay i think they asked about the uh, hot blast or something again i don't remember the exact things but yeah it's pretty much straightforward if you know about blast furnace you can directly go about it and also one more thing which is again easier part right so see uh, of course this is a memory based video so we are we cannot remember or no one cannot actually recollect whole question but yes using these two at least you should be able to find out the answer okay and not that the other two are not known uh, to me or to someone else but yeah because we don't remember the options we are not uh, you know uh, we don't want to mislead you so yeah that's why we are waiting and uh, giving you and these are also straightforward the other two options are also just easy just by looking at it you can just put the answer that's that easy okay and also you have one more easy question asking you that a single crystal turbine blades are manufactured what process is actually used okay so again if you do any of the previous year questions this is an important question basically turbine blades are all generated by something called as investment casting or the lost wax method which is you know one of the famous method to generate or produce turbine blades and that is what is the option right so basically they gave different options like direct solidification uh, and some other you know techniques but the answer is investment casting right so yeah i think this is part 2 of the memory based questions i hope you are liking these videos and uh, if you feel that we missed some questions of course we don't remember all the questions also uh, mail us or dm us on whatsapp so that we can also try to make many more videos from that of course we are doing many more parts already we have collected um, about 30 to 35 questions so which will be out soon so yeah again thanks for the love that you are showing on us do subscribe everything metallurgy and also visit everythingmetallurgy.com if you want to enroll for gate 2022 live classes or video courses which have already been started so yeah that's it from this video we'll meet you again in the next one thank you guys